Good morning you guys, thanks for joining. Today we're going to do a little bit of a roof patch. We had a storm recently in my part of Central California and we had some shingles detached. You can see the top of this barn here. It's been re-roofed. It's got a previous layer underneath and we got a second newer layer on top which is legal in this part of California. It is code. So it looks like we've got some tar paper damage potentially and obviously we're missing some shingles the shingles are all surviving pretty well they're all over here we're gonna have to pull those nails back out but they look like they're in pretty good shape so we're gonna go ahead and reuse them because that top layer of roof is not that old and for this job I'm a weirdo I like using ball peen hammers not in the metal shop so we will need a variety of things. I'm going to need the caulking gun with some roof and flashing caulking just in case we've got some odd holes, some tears on some roof shingles. That'll fix it. Loctite brand roof and flashing stuff smells like chocolate cake. It's wonderful. Since we have a layer of roofing underneath, I'm going to use inch and three quarter nails. You can also use two inch. I wouldn't go any lower than that because you're probably not going to get any penetration into the plywood underneath. Since again, we have an under layer of roofing, I'm going to use two inch metal cap nails. We're going to use that to secure the tar paper. Since some of it's pulled up, we're probably not going to need the, the hammer tacker. Typically, you'll just need this for roof felt or paper on top of directly on top of plywood. Um, but I'm going to bring it up just in case. And I'm bringing up number 30 roof felt just in case we need to patch in or replace any of that roof felt up there. But from down here, it looks like everything's going to be OK. And uh, of course, you're going to need your measuring tape, maybe a pencil maybe a straight edge we'll figure out more when we get up there and for this job lucky me i get the telescopic boom all right guys let's get up there And we are checking out the damage. Now I was told by the owner that this roof is about 15 years old. At least that's what the inspector told her. So we're looking at this felt paper and it's still flexible. It's still in pretty good condition. And these holes aren't gonna affect us much because we're gonna have the, the asphalt tiles going over, the shingles rather. So we don't have to worry about these. So it looks like we really don't have to replace much as far as the tar paper goes. We might have to do. No, you know, I think we're pretty good. So I don't know if you guys know, but with roofing, with asphalt shingles, it's pretty standard around here to do a double layer on the bottom and then overlap going up. And of course, we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. That way, each one of these rows is overlapping the previous so water flows over and down instead of under and i don't know if i elaborated enough for the bottom you have one shingle row upside down and the other one normal side up so double and that adds a little bit of weight to the edges and prevents um prevents them from lifting up so we are going to go ahead and get started by securing this roof felt with some of those metal cap nails the previous installer used plastic cap nails you can use those too we're going to get take care of this bubble because this likely contributed to these roof shingles sloughing off and falling and here we go I think I've already spotted the first problem. Um, this roof may have been repaired since it was installed in the last 10-15 years. 
So you can see here, this is a no-no. We have the tar paper that's overlapping the shingle, okay? This tar paper needs to be laid down and overlap. I think at least two inches going horizontal all the way up, fully secured. And then you start your shingles. Whoever did this patch did a layer of tar paper, did the shingles, and then put another layer of tar paper and then did the shingles and overlap the tar paper over the shingle. So what this does is this allows a gap at the edge, any moisture, whatever, can go up in between these shingles and go into here. All of this gets warped out, gets degraded, and uh, this, this caused some bubbling. So let's be real. We don't really have the funds or the time to re-roof this entire place. So we're gonna make the best with the bad situation. We're gonna use some of these metal cap nails. We're gonna secure it where we can try to get rid of as many of these bubbles as possible, put these shingles back on, and uh, make do with the, uh, the resources and time that we have. and roll out these bubbles in a direction such that they are minimized and we don't end up pinching them together and forming any little ridges that are gonna prevent us from laying out those shingles nice and flat. So kind of test it out, see which way is the best way to minimize those things. And it looks like kind of up and to the left in this piece is gonna work best. We're making our way up. Got these metal cap nails, but we still have some areas that are still kind of bubbling a little bit. So I'm using the uh, the slap hammer. Actually, that's not the proper name for this. The the hammer tacker to uh, to reduce some of these in between, so we're not driving so many of these nails in. And as you can see, that's going to kind of do the job. So I'm going to go ahead and fill the spaces with some of these uh, with some of these staples. So another little problem I wanted to highlight for you guys here that I found is the overlap. Now, if you guys can see up in there, that is less than two inches. We want at least two inches in this whole area. So that's another thing that's contributing to our issues here. We also have a tear in the felt paper right there. So we're gonna cut a strip about five inches wide or so to cover this whole area. And again, we're being realistic. This is just a patch in. This is a, this is not a long-term permanent repair. This whole roof needs to get repaired in the next few years, but we're doing that for now. Now for the root felt that I'm using, the sheets are about 40 inches wide. What we have right here is about 60 inches. So if we were just to cut horizontal strips, we're going to have yet another overlap up here and that's going to increase dimension and bulge out a little bit. So what I've done here is it's just pulled out about 60 inches and that way I can make multiple strips just in case we need some up there. We haven't gotten there yet and I can make that all just one single strip so we don't have another overlap that's going to add more dimension and cause lifting in some of the shingles. And oh yeah, forgot to add this to the material list. You definitely need a utility blade for cutting the tar paper. All right, so I don't have the most even cut. It's a little difficult to cut this tar paper up at the boom of this lift. But what we're gonna do is tuck this up under like so. I'm gonna make sure we have a two inch overlap, which we will, 
This is about five inches right here. So we just do it halfway. We'll have at least two inches there. Going up and going down. And we'll have enough to cover that little hole that's over here. And then we'll go ahead and tack that in. And call that good and move on up. Okay guys, so we got our strip in, we got it tacked in place. We used the metal cap nails with a few staples in between just to secure it a little bit. Um, and we are also moving up into the next sheet, getting out those bubbles again with the metal cap uh, nails. Now, little issue I should cover, just so you guys know for repair purposes, these holes are gonna be okay. It's an old roof. We have the asphalt shingles that are covering those. So that's gonna waterproof. And if any water does happen to penetrate those asphalt shingles, it's probably not gonna get in those holes. Even if water does flow over that hole, this stuff resists and repels water enough such that you're barely gonna get any water in there and it's really not gonna be an issue. Um, for any protruding nails, go ahead and hammer those in instead of pulling them out because you're gonna cause a lot more damage try to pull them out not only that but it's going to take a lot more time so we're going to move on up so as we said we're moving on up i have put some uh, metal cap nails along this bump that we have here we have another one coming up right over there that we got to check out so without pulling everything apart it's kind of hard to tell what's going on under here but when i did nail these in they went in kind of soft so um just to remind you guys, we do have another layer of roofing underneath this felt paper. And the fact that they went in so soft, there's probably some uh, some leakage to the, uh, to the plywood underneath that initial layer, causing that to bow out. Because um, if it were just that first layer underneath, these two inch nails would definitely compensate and suck those down, and it didn't do that. Not only did it not suck it down, it went in soft. So the problem is probably the wood, uh, plywood underneath. But like we said, we don't always have the time, resources, and money to handle these issues. All we can do is finish this patch in and uh, hopefully in the next few years they can get this uh, re-roofed. Now as down here, we have the same issue here. We don't have enough of an overlap. overlap. That's probably maybe a little over one inch that needs to be at least two inches so we're gonna have to just like down here insert another strip and with these plastic cap nails you can go ahead and just pull the cap off with some pliers that's another tool to add to your list sorry guys i wasn't that prepared and as i mentioned before it is much more efficient to just go ahead and tap those nails in because we're probably just gonna go ahead and pull this off anyways and detach them from the nails to get that new strip up in there. As you can see, we got everything dialed in. So we're gonna start laying some shingles on. I have the original double shingle for the first layer right here. And we can start to see what went wrong because these initial shingles, and as I already mentioned a couple times, this, uh, this roof has been initially roofed or it's re-roofed i guess i should say so there is a asphalt shingle layer underneath this tar paper and if you take a look here here's one of the original nails that's short that is a one inch roof nail and definitely not the length you want to use if you're re-roofing you want those nails long enough to penetrate your top layer 
your tar paper, your bottom layer of asphalt shingles, whatever paper they have underneath that, and sink it deep enough into the plywood underneath. Um, so depending on where you live, you may want to check the code for the length of nails or the depth that you need to penetrate that plywood with. But you can fully penetrate the plywood and expose the nail underneath into the attic space. That's totally fine because everything is waterproof. So we're going to go ahead and start Ooh. setting up. these roof shingles in place and we're gonna use one and three quarter inch nails is what we have to work with ideally I'd probably be wanting to use two inch but one and three quarters should give us plenty of bite into that plywood underneath so I'm gonna lay these back out and the only real one that I have to match is this bottom one and the rest of the shingles are all pretty much the same size. So I can just, uh, I can just knock them all out. And uh, I'll just give you guys an update here in a minute. So we got that first row tacked in with the uh, inch and three quarter nails and holding tight. So for our overlaps for the existing, uh, the existing rows that did not fall off, we're gonna go ahead and replace each one of these nails going up, popping them out, and putting in the inch and three quarters. Now ideally, this whole roof needs to be redone. And like I keep reiterating, this is just a quick temporary fix because we're often limited by money, time, and, uh, and other resources. So we're gonna do the best we can to, especially in there, to on the sides of our patch, try and get in uh, inch and three quarter nails wherever we can along with all of our replacement tiles that we are, well, not replacement, the ones we're reusing that we have here in the boom with us. And I'll give you an update here in a minute, guys. The update time, as you can see, we got the shingles coming on very nicely. So, just give you a little, uh, little background on what I'm doing here. I'm taking care to remove all the previous nails, those little one inch ones from the shingles that we're reusing that fell off. We're inserting them like so. And we are, you haven't done asphalt shingles before, we're nailing through the overlap here. And uh, these are typically marked with a line that you can see right along here. And you can see where the existing nail holes went. You can kind of offset your new nails from those holes. You can drive them through too. You might get a little bit of a better hold if you just move them over a little bit. So we're tacking these up. I'll do this real quick just to give you guys an idea if you haven't done this before again I'm a weirdo I use a ball peen hammer I just like the way it swings and we're also taking care to replace using our pliers any nails that we can that are exposed without pulling off more shingles just to reinforce our patch area. Don't know if I mentioned before with these full sheets, you want at least five nails. What I normally do is I go ahead and I tack one in the middle just to hold it up evenly. And you can start at the end, you can start at the next one over. And again, we're going through that strip because that has the most hold. That's the strongest reinforced part of the shingle. And we tap these guys in. You can do more than five nails if it makes you happy. And then when you come up to do the next layer, those all get hidden. So we tuck that up back to where it was. We got something blocking us there. All those nails get nice and hidden. We're still moving along. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, it is not the warmest day out. So these asphalt shingles are actually a lot more flexible when they're in direct sunlight. They heat up, they're a lot more bendable. So that does make it easier to kind of peel these up to get those reinforcement longer nails on the edges that we're doing. So 
sometimes you have to kind of cut corners. You don't want to break it. You don't want to fracture it. So every once in a while, you'll get a little bit of a, a chip. You got to do what you got to do. So I'm pulling this up and nailing that in simultaneously. And I knocked that out a little bit, but we're just going to hit that with some of that Loctite roof and flashing caulking. The stuff that I said smells like chocolate cake. And, uh, and cover that up just to be extra sure. Same with down here, because we'd have to keep pulling this up even farther to hit the reinforced row for nailing for this shingle. So maybe I'll just throw some back there too and press that up and let that seal and hold tight. Hey y'all, we're getting pretty close to the top. The sun's been out for, uh, for at least half hour or so. So these shingles are starting to warm up and they're a lot easier to work with. So since we're coming up on the button up, it's a little bit more awkward because we don't have open space in that exposed reinforced strip to drive those nails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop that nail on that strip. I'm gonna give it a couple taps just so it stays in that shingle, but I don't damage that top shingle that I'm gonna lap it with. You guys can see that okay. And then another tool to add to your guys' list that I didn't quite foresee when I was on the ground is a flat bar. And since it's sunny out, it's warm, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up with the flat bar left hand. Drive that nail in like so. And we're gonna do that. Don't need it for this strip but we'll need it for that final strip. We got one here and then that last one tucks in under. Again, we'll use that flat bar and uh, then we'll move on to a couple uh, spots. We're caulking, you know, it's a little uneven with the existing roof shingles. We're going up. I'm trying to maintain nice work and not match a less than decent job. Uh, so we'll go back and caulk those holes to make sure we don't get water penetration in those and then we'll move on to the next task. All right, guys, so it's time to use that awesome caulking that I was talking about earlier. I'm going to do my best uh, to have uh, inserted um, affiliate links and uh, to get you guys uh, steered in the right direction as far as ordering the right material. Uh, if not, or anyways, I'm going to show you here. I've got this Loctite roof and flashing in again. This stuff smells like chocolate cake. It's wonderful. You probably don't want to be inhaling this stuff, but it's a pleasant smell. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut at a slight angle, maybe 30 degrees or so, a half inch bead. So I, hopefully you guys can see this. With our utility blade and another addition, try to buy some extra blades for utility blade. Cutting a bunch of roof shingles. There's embedded gravel and rock in this. It'll wear it down pretty quick. Okay. So typically, caulking gun's going to have a stabber. This tube's sealed, so puncture that. And then what we are going to do is hit each one of those exposed nails. And again, this is the existing roof you can see that uh, they didn't do it quite evenly, so I'm doing my best to blend in a good job with a, uh, I don't know, I'd like to say not as good a job, but that's uh, a little prideful. I'm doing the best we can here. We're going to hit each one of these nail holes. And I could come back with a little piece of cardboard and kind of scrape off the excess and blend it in a little bit. And I'm just going to do that in each one of these points. If there's any damage to any of these roof tiles, shingles, I guess I should say, I'll also hit it with a little bit of caulk. Also, too, in between squeezes, mine automatically relaxes after I let go of the trigger. A lot of them don't. So be sure you pull back the trigger. I guess this would be the hammer if you're thinking gun. And uh, release some of the pressure so you don't have caulking constantly coming out of the end in between squirts.